All right, so these are the, uh, this is the equipment that's gonna be used for the rear, four inch lift install. I'm just gonna show you and make it easy. Just the sway bar links. Gonna replace these that are here. Remove them with this. You're gonna put these spacers on your shocks. The bump stop here is gonna go right here on the bottom, right there. Gonna drill an 11 30 second hole in the middle. Put in there. And then this is gonna be a spacer for the coils. So you're gonna remove that coil. Well, you have to. We're gonna remove the shocks so we can lower the coil. Put these on top, and it's gonna go like so. So. This, is good. this black piece is going to act like a washer. That's going to go in there. It's going to go like this. But it's going inside the coil. And then you're going to put the coil back. So let's get started. We make the strings louder. All right, so to remove this sway bar, you're going to need an 18 millimeter on one end. It's an 18 millimeter nut. And the, the head of the bowl is on the opposite side. I'll show you real quick. So, that little bolt ish nut is here as well. So, you're gonna put a 19 wrench here, 18 wrench or socket, and then go from there. So, I'm gonna do that right now. Right, for the top, I just got an 18 uh, wrench, and it's a ratchet wrench, and I'm just going. You can try. Well, I guess you eventually have to remove the shock as well. So you can remove the shock and go back, but I'm just going to remove this one here. So not too bad with the ratchet wrench. Now that I got it broken, I'm going to use a ratchet on this 18 ratchet on this side. And of course on the top, there's an 18 head bolt on the other side. So put that there and ratchet away. Knock it out. All right, taking out the shocks here. This is a, a 21. And so, so is this one. So I'm gonna put the uh, uh, wrench here, put a, put a wrench, and then put a, sorry, put a socket here, put a wrench here, and go ahead and use my torque wrench to get it out. Lift this sway bar, pop something in here, and then knock it. I'm gonna remove that brake line, separate that. There we go. So it has a little bit more slack when it goes, when I, when I go down. So now I'm gonna jack it up and release the coils. Take off the struts. Now I lowered the jack and I got my normal jack there. So lower the jack stands, got my normal jack. Now I'm gonna lower the uh, differential. That should give some pressure for the uh, coils to be able to come down. So let's Arms. Do and once I get these released, then I'm gonna jack it up. The coils should come right up. Now that uh, they're not being constrained by this controller. Now. Oh, now that this is gone, it's just swinging. So I'm gonna take the other side off and I'm gonna lower it with the jack in the middle, right? So I'm gonna lower these, put the jack lower, and we should be good. So now I'm gonna jack it down. Notice I got jack stands on the frame on the front here before where that joint starts. Now I'm gonna, I already got this one uh, loose or off. Uh, there was no way to loosen it without. Uh, um, still having it attached. So now I'm just gonna let it down. The truth is, I need to let this down all the way. Make sure that this doesn't get entangled. And I should be good. There it is. The coils are going down. All right, let's see if that's enough because I think I have too many pieces of wood on that. I may have to jack it back off. All right, so I got the blocks off. Now, let's see what happens. It should come right out. There it is. Watch my 
brake line. Let's see if that's enough. Nope. Gotta keep going. Watching that brake line. Make sure it's not first. Yep, still good. There we go. It's a little bit more. Perfect. Not too stressed. I'm take this out. There it is. There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut on the top. Then go ahead and screw everything in. Then put the bump stop right here. Now the coil sits in the vehicle. I'm gonna remove this, and here's what's gonna happen. Um, this piece is going to replace it. Here's how it goes. This is a M70. This is the uh, M12 by 70 they're talking about. Washer, flat washer. It's gonna sit like this now, instead. Now, to make sure it's secure, this nut plate's gonna sit on top. So, it's gonna be like, so, this nut plate is gonna screw in from the top. Just like that. So, I'm gonna go install that real quick. So I'm gonna put the spacers on the shocks but you got to remove this little shroud these are seven millimeter a little bolts here you got them different places plus you need some panel clip removers just to remove these and getting this spring spacer in was uh, this coil spacer was uh very very tricky so what i discovered is i was i had to take out this little shroud that covers the rear well real well and um you can't it's difficult to get your hand through here to be able to hold that plate Gotta hold that plate because otherwise it just spins. If you look at the top, see, let it focus. See the bolt in the very tip there? Let's see if it'll focus right there. Anyway, so what you have to do is you can't go through here, but if you go underneath, there's a hole right here. So I use one hand to, uh, well, I try that. That, that, that. If you have long hands, you can do it. So I use one hand just to kind of screw it in. And I got a long wrench just to hold that plate enough where as I screwed it in, it caught and then it pretty much catches by itself and then you just simply torque it to 50. So I'm gonna do the other side real quick and see how it goes. All right, so I already put the plate in there and the flat surface goes on the bottom, the curved surface goes on the top. So now here's what I'm gonna do. Use this wrench and I'm gonna just See if I can just, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit more difficult on this side because you notice this is kind of getting in my way. It pulls off a little bit and I'm going to use the wrench. I'm gonna come from this side and I'm just going to just use that to wedge it while I screw it in, so. I'm just gonna try to squeeze my hand in there because it ain't working as it is. It is not working as it is. So, oh, it worked. Got my hand squeezed in. Okay. Now, get that dropped. Now I can do it. Perfect. Look, see my hands in there? All right, so you gotta squeeze your hand in there. There it is, got it. Got it. Woohoo! Took a minute. There she is. All right. So now I'm gonna torque her to 50. So while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bump stops taken care of. So here's the pad. You're gonna get the center. I'm gonna use a punch just to mark the center hole. And then I'm gonna drill using an 11 32nd bit. Um, I didn't have one in my set. You may or may not. So I went ahead and got one from uh, Menards. Um, so, and you don't have to be perfect. Just, you know, you got the general idea is all that matters. The instructions told you initially to just loosen the uh, rear control arms. But there's no way to get this uh, rear diff lower without completely taking it off. 
and it helps because in order to drill, I'm gonna have to lift this up and drill. So that gives me the space I need. All right, so I got my uh, hole punch. Go ahead, use that, spring loaded, I love these. Use a small drill bit to start the hole, then use a bigger as necessary until you get one sizable enough to be able to easily drill this hole without it moving around. And then once you're done there, you're gonna put the bump stop in. I only got two of these 3A self-tapping screws in my, in my package, um, and I needed actually five. Three for my differential plate, and then two for these. And you just simply put them in, and then you just simply uh, drill them in. Make sure you don't over strip it or over tighten it so that you don't uh, strip the thing, so. All right, I'm through. There it is. Now it's a 14. Now to put the springs and the uh, isolators back on, you gotta use these factory ones. These little rubber deals are the isolators. Let's roll. So the situation is I've gone as low as I can go and still I don't have any clearance. So what I have to do is I'm gonna jack up the frame. As you notice, these jack stands were on the frame, but I need to go higher. So put some wood blocks in my jack. I'm gonna go higher, get this side, then I'll get the other side. I jacked it up, still a little bit of clearance issue. I have one option, I can go ahead and loosen that lower control arm so it could just lower, but I'm just gonna use a crowbar and just get it in. So let's see what happens. The only issue by the way is I need to remove this bracket so I don't stress this uh, brake line. The lower control arm is 21 on both sides. Worked. I pushed down and went down a little further. And that's all I needed. This should have been my solution the first time, grease. I put grease on there, I don't even need a crowbar. It just slides in. I mean, come on. Work smarter, not harder. Look at that, just slides in. I'll do that next time. Just, just put grease on there. Arms on, notice I played it smart this time. I'm using grease on the outside so that when it slides in there, I also put grease in there, it goes in smoothly. So I'm gonna go and lower the uh, jack on the frame so that it makes it easier for me when I jack the rear end up, it's easier for it to connect. connect so. All right, so I got it. Stick this crowbar in here, pull back. Voila. Make sure you put some Permatex, some thread locker, and all these components you took off. And all the components back, we're good to go. Get the sweep bar link, get the strut, jack it up, put the wheels back on, and we're good to go. Now just to put the struts back, and we're done. Push up, compress it. Bar. Raise her up a little bit. Good luck. Now we're done. Get the tires on, see where we are. Done and done. Um, this is what it looks like. All right, I need to put the shroud back on there. Here's one of the reasons I did it prior to. I'm on this driveway. It's in kind of an incline. Before the uh, the lift, the uh, wheel well was right on the tire. And sometimes when you go through bumps, same situation. So looking good now not only looking good but functionally well it's not rubbing against the tire anymore we're good to go the only thing i would say as far as hindsight is just uh make sure you got everything in your box and go to menards or whatever uh home depot or such stores and get a metric ruler 
my biggest issue with the instructions was, unlike some other instructions I've seen, they tell you or they show you a picture of what the bolt is. Now in the United States, we're not used to using millimeters. We use, you know, um, inches and feet. So <laughs> when they say, you know, you need an M12 bolt by this and that, it's just, uh, it's a little, unless you have a picture, it's difficult to see, you know, or know. And some of them are so close together, you don't know exactly which one's which. So this uh, makes a difference for you. But besides that, it was, uh, it wasn't too difficult because of time, time-wise, it took me about uh, two days, you know, broken up in, in between. That said, guys, um, like, comment, subscribe. Put me some comments on what you've done that made it easier, what I did wrong, what I did right. And uh, Magnificent, signing out.